YouTube, this is Cousin Dan again. This time I have a video for all you water coolers. Got my 944 here, and I have the water cool, water cooled oil cooler that has a leak. There's a seal in there that broke, and now I'm mixing oil with my water and water with my oil. So what we need to do is take the cooler off, take the actual cooler medium off, replace the seals, replace the gasket, put it back together. I'm going to show you how it's done. It's somewhat involved, but I'll try to make this as brief as possible. Um, I'm going to put up some text screens, show you things like di uh, diagnostic things, like the symptoms that I saw. Um, but anyway, just uh, follow along. You can pause, whatever, and uh, I'll show you how it's done. All right, of course, the first thing to do is jack up the car. But then uh, the next thing is you got to get some things out of the way in order to really get to the actual oil, oil cooler. So. These, uh, these are the headers here, this is the header, and these are the header bolts right here and there and all the way down. There's going to be eight of them, two on each side of each pipe coming out of each cylinder. So uh, I just need to take out those, take those nuts off, and slide the header back and out of the way. If you can, if you want to take the time, it will make it easier to just take the whole header off the car. Alright, and then after you take the headers off, uh, you're just going to have to go in here and take a 24 millimeter or 5 16 open end and take off the oil pressure sender. And, uh, and then when you're done with that, you can also take out here, this is the oil pressure release valve. And uh, that's also gonna be a 24 millimeter or 5 16 uh, You can use a socket on that one. Pull that thing out. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna either want an alignment tool or this thing later, I'll show you that. Um, but then there's gonna be four uh, 13 millimeter bolts around the, uh, the body of the, of the actual cooler. Um, and so you take that out. Uh, and take off the heat shield on top and then slide it out. And uh, you'll see here in a second how we're gonna do all that. All right, now before we really go any further, just wanna make sure we drain the oil because that's gonna have to happen anyway. Sometimes those get tighter as you drive. This thing off of here. And look at that foggy oil come out. That is because this on my hand is because it mixed with coolant. That is exactly what we were expecting to see. Here's what the actual oil filter looks like. You can see how frothy and brown that oil is. That's a result of mixing with the coolant inside the engine while it was running. All right, now one thing that you're going to have to get out of the way in order to take the heat shield out once you once you loosen it and take the, the, the nuts out, you just got to pull this off. This is the um, one of the transfer lines for the cooling system, uh, antifreeze goes through here. And then you can you can pull the heat shield out once you take this off because it uh, it opens up the, the passageway there. Finally, what we have to do is take off the um, oil pressure sending unit wires, take out the oil pressure sending unit, and then take out the oil pressure release valve. And uh, and both of those are a 24 millimeter um, socket head. Well, one's a socket head, the sending unit actually requires an open end. Pull those things out, slide them out, then we're going to take out these four uh, 13 millimeter bolts on around the uh, four corners of the housing for the oil cooler, and then slide everything out, slide the, the element out, and then we'll look at it and see which seal broke and replace them all. Okay, now I have the actual external housing for the cooler out of the car, and we can see the two points where these things go in that we just took out. First, we have the oil pressure release valve here. What this is, is it's a, uh, a spring-loaded valve that basically pushes in and releases when things when oil gets too high pressure so it doesn't damage anything. The other thing we have is the oil pressure sender unit. That screws in right here. And that's what we had to use the open end for on this bolt right here. So when you take that off, you have to take your wires off first. They can only go back on one way, so don't have to worry about getting them crossed. So when you take that off, then you can t take the four bolts off here, here, and here and here. And then you flip the thing over, and inside you will find the actual cooler element. It actually goes in this way. Now, the cooler element has a metal washer on this side here, and a plastic washer on this side. The gasket kits you'll get will have a new plastic washer. The, uh, the seals around the edge here are the same on both sides, and they are rubber O-rings. They're a little bit different color here, but they come in the kit as the same washer. One way I'm going to use, the uh, method I'm going to use to take this thing off, I'm just going to put an awl under it, and then slip it right off the outside. And of course I'll clean up this section 
put a new one on and it'll do the same thing on this side and then put it all back together and use some assembly grease to uh, to, to lube the, the edge of this thing to hold the gasket in place and uh, and after that I'll show you how to use the alignment tool to uh, to make sure everything's lined up for the oil pressure release valve. So once you get the, the mating surface for the gasket all cleared off you might want to take a razor blade. Be careful with that though because you can nick the aluminum. Um, but once you get that cleared off you can uh, put the gaskets back on. I got one here and I got one on the other side. Those are just the, the O-rings and one goes against there and that's the side that has the plastic seal. So I'm actually going to take off the original plastic seal for, or uh, washer from that side and I'm going to put on the new plastic washer just kind of snaps in place and that goes between the housing and the filter or the cool cooler element so that just goes in there, in there just like this and then you press the uh, the o-ring in like that now what you need to do once you have these o-rings pressed in on the other side is, uh, is you take a straight edge and you set it across both sides of the mating surface and make sure that uh, here just a little bit closer here and make sure that you are within plus or minus 0.25 millimeters from the boss there the edge which is the edge of this now I've already got this shim on here you can see it like that I've got this shim and uh, and that allows me there we go I can see it better that allows me to um, uh, to measure this correctly so it looks like I'm definitely within 0.25 millimeters if I put another uh, shim on there which is like what came with this with the kit it's too much so I'm gonna leave it just like that um, and that's actually how it was set up when I took it out of my car so I'm cool with that and we'll go ahead and set the, uh, the the seal gasket around the outside and then put it back on the car all right so I'm now gonna put this rubber piece in here and uh, I've coated it with a light coat of grease so it'll stay on during the uh, installation of everything but uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to fit in but at this angle but once I got it it should stay. So there we go. That's the that's the rubber piece. I'm gonna press this thing together. The, um, the force that I'm going to use to uh, tighten down the the housing will press this against the block and make sure we have a tight seal there. All right, because we don't want to damage the gasket, um, we're just kind of going to try to work this this housing with the cooler element inside of it into the position before we put the the, the uh, gasket on. So now I'm working the thing into place. And um, trying to be very careful with it. Just don't want to damage the edges of it. Feels like I've got it about there. It fits into the groove on the uh, cooler housing. And, uh, and now I'm going to push the thing toward the engine block and press it into place. There we go. Yeah, I can feel the O-rings go in thing should hold itself there. I'm just going to hold it for a minute just to make sure it doesn't come out. And I'm going to put in the four the four bolts uh, that hold it in place, but I'm not going to tighten them yet. So in the next step uh, here, I'll show you why you don't tighten them yet. Okay, so now that I have the housing on here, uh, tightened, uh, not tightened, we just kind of uh, threaded the bolts in almost all the way. I can still move it around, it's still loose. So I'm going to take this tool. This is, um, this is the oil pressure release valve guiding tool. And uh, it's it's basically a dummy of the oil pressure release valve, um, uh, but a relief valve. But it has a wider diameter than that, so that it can align uh, the whole housing correctly when you put it in where the valve normally goes. So I'm going to screw this thing in, and uh, it's a little bit firm going in. And um, basically, what it's going to do is it's going to use that step on it to align the whole housing. So once I get this thing all the way in, I can torque down. The, uh, the four uh, 13 millimeter bolts uh, to uh, 15 foot pounds of torque. Um, and then when I get that done, I can pull this thing back out and then put in the real oil pressure relief valve and then, uh, and then go ahead and install this to, I think it's 33 foot pounds. Uh, you'll see it in the manual. I'll put up uh, some information about, about the, uh, the torque ratings as well. Okay, so what's happened here is the uh, the fourth bolt, or the one directly across from where the oil pressure release valve is, the one down there with the tap in it, it's stripped out. So I'm just tapping it out with a little larger diameter. Uh, should be okay. I think that uh, when I run the bolt in, I should be able to get up to 15 pounds of uh, pound, foot-pounds of torque. 
what happened was I, uh, I had the torque wrench on it. I only got up to about five and then it stripped. So there was something that was at fault in there. I don't know if the threads had already previously been stressed or whatever the case was, it needs to be tapped out and, uh, and, and reset. So that's what you gotta do. Um, if this happens while you're working on yours. All right, so after I tapped that one out, I just uh, put the bolt in and then uh, mounted this shield here, put the headers back on, and now you can see I've got this uh, brand new, well, not brand new, but cleaned up uh, mounting for the oil filter. I'm just gonna put that on, put a little bit of, of oil around the surface of it, then put it on and go ahead and fill up my engine with oil, um, run it for like a minute or so, uh, drain it out to get all that crap oil out of there, refill it, but um, before I run it the first time, I'm also going to uh, refill my coolant system with a little bit of flush. I'll show you that in a second, and uh, we'll try to get this thing back on the road. So these are the two things I'm going to use. I'm going to fill up my radiator, uh, the cooling system, with this super flush from Prestone, and then you just add some water to it according to the to the instructions on the bottle. I'm also going to use some really cheap, crappy conventional motor oil, um, just like Meyer brand, just so I can put it in there. Um, drain and, and run it for a minute and drain it out. I, I don't want to use anything good because it's only going to be in there for a couple minutes. Also, I'm using a lighter weight than normal. Normally I use 2050, but I'm putting 5W30 in um, because I think that uh, it'll flush out faster, probably carrying more crap with it. Um, so that's my reasoning behind that. Anyway, um, there may be some other schools of thought out there as to what you should do here, but this is what I'm about to do. When you go to actually drain the radiator, there's a little plug here at the bottom. You just pull that out, make sure you got a bucket underneath, and let it fly. Uh, just put it back in when you're done, fill up the thing with uh, water and some flush, or uh, just let a hose run through it for a while, and that's pretty much uh, all that uh, you have to do to flush your radiator system. After flushing the radiator system, basically what I did is I used this little uh, bleeder valve here to make sure that when I refill it, with the actual antifreeze. I, uh, I got all the air out of it, sealed it down, make sure you get a new copper or aluminum washer in there. And, uh, and then I ran the oil through it once for about two minutes, drained it out right away, changed the filter, changed the oil, and uh, I think it's good to go. I, I took it for a spin, it feels very powerful. I checked the oil again, there's no uh, cross mixing between the oil and the coolant. So I think we fixed the problem, and, uh, and that's how you do it. So thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Cousin Dan.